Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to our trading room. What day is it today? I'm having a really hard time keeping track of the dates since we got back from vacation. Okay, Tuesday. Tuesday today. Welcome to Tuesday's trading room. Um, you have to bear with me here a few minutes. My charts are giving me some problems here this morning. I thought that I would cycle between the Ninja 7 and Ninja 8 charts until I had my Ninja 8 fully loaded up. Right now I only have the the uh, Raptor going on Ninja, but you can see I'm having some issues here. So please be patient with me as my charts try to update. It isn't like I just logged on and did this too. They've been, I've been fighting with this for almost 15 minutes. I don't know why it's being so difficult, but there it is, it is. Come on. If it doesn't straighten up soon, I'll just boot up Ninja 8 and we'll stay with the uh, with the Raptor just for today. Thank goodness it's opening range. And I don't hear my computer working. Hmm. Come on. I knew I was giving it too much to do here, but hopefully the charts, come on, give me at least one chart. I have all my charts synced, so if I change one, one chart, they all reboot <laughs> David says I hear the Russians are using Ninja 8 <laughs> that's that's a good one David <laughs> all right it does look like uh it's loading slowly Usually, um, when I'm trading, I try not to do too much during opening range anyhow. Very often, you will get some very strong moves out of the open. It looks like this morning we're getting a very decent rally. But that's not always the case. Sometimes... Uh, the open just has so much volatility associated with it. That it makes trading it very difficult. Okay, it looks like... Everything is loaded up, so we'll just throw the trade manager on here really quick. Okay, there we go. One second while I save this. Okay. Now, for those of you still using Ninja 7, you know, I get, I must get at least three or four emails every day asking, should I be moving to Ninja 8? Is Ninja 7 still supported? Yes, Ninja 7 is still supported. 
Ninja 8 is the standard for Ninja right now. Um, you know, as a software company, they're moving forward. They're trying to develop new software. They're trying to improve their software. <laughs> Depending on who you ask, <laughs> Ninja 8 may or may not be better. But there, you don't have to upgrade to Ninja 8. But of course, like I said, that's the standard now. So that's the direction the company is moving. Therefore, since our horse is more or less tied to Ninja's wagon, uh, that's also the way Indicator Warehouse is moving. Uh, I'm going to be setting up my Ninja 8 the same way as I have this set up, namely where I have my Hawk Scalper in the top left, the Falcon Swing Trader top right, Eagle Trend Trader bottom left, and I'll probably keep my Raptor on the bottom right as well. The Raptor is the, the hybrid system, and what the Raptor does is it incorporates elements of the Hawk, the Falcon, and the Eagle all into one. I have had uh, a request before, and Richard, if you're in the room, I'm sorry that I didn't do much with your request earlier, but I will do uh, something with Richard's suggestion this year. Richard suggested, why don't you spend a day a week on each of the tools? And then I guess the, the last day can kind of just be a, uh, a day where we're using all the tools together. Because Richard, and I know there's several of you in the room who are just DTS owners. And as he rightly noted, I've been spending a lot of time on the Raptor. And that's just because the majority of the people in the trading room right now are probably Raptor owners. And I could do a little survey, I suppose, to get the exact numbers, but I don't, he felt like he was being neglected as a DTS owner. And I apologize for that, but it is something that I will rectify. So we'll try it and uh, hopefully it'll work out for everyone. Uh, even if we're focusing on, let's say, uh, the Hawk, it's the Hawk day. And as a Raptor owner, if you have a question about something like, uh, you know, why did that hawk signal not show up on my Raptor or whatever? If you just have a signal about or a question about the way the signal is generating on the Raptor, please, please, please ask. This trading room is here for your benefit. It's to help you become proficient with your tools. You know, I, after using these tools for how many years now? Six years or more? You kind of take them for granted, but these are, these are very powerful signal generators. There is a lot more going on than what you see on the screen here. We've got you know, multiple algorithms working behind the scenes that have to have have to be met before you'll even produce a warning dot. So, like I said, please don't be shy about asking. If there's something that's confusing you. If you're just looking to mirror trades, that's OK, too, uh, but it helps me to know that that's why you're here. Because sometimes, because this is a an educational room in nature, I will sometimes show you stuff that if I were taking a real money trade, I wouldn't necessarily do. So again, it helps to know how the room can best help you. And while my wife thinks I'm psychic, really, I'm not. I'm not a mind reader. <laughs> 
and uh, thank goodness she's out of earshot. <laughs> Otherwise, <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> All right, well, let's take a look here. Let's see if my daily chart updated. It did too. Uh, you know, it's helpful to have a longer term perspective on the marketplace. This is just a regular daily chart, nothing fancy. And a couple of things uh, looking here at the daily chart besides the rather predominant downtrend through December is I would say we have ourselves a little bit of a channel forming. Now what's interesting with channels is if you can draw a channel on one end, you very often can transfer the channel line. That one maybe not quite so much. The second channel line is a little trickier to draw some people, coincidentally, like to draw their lines. They like to ignore the wicks, and they'll draw their lines across the, the closing prices, in which case their channel looks more like this. But here is what I wanted to point out to you, is this right here. Normally, you would consider a break through the bottom end of a trading channel to be very, very bearish, wouldn't you? But in fact, a breach of a channel line tends to be more bullish. And a breach of the channel line, if we get a channel line breach up here, it will actually have a bearish effect. So I, I think that's something to look for over the next few days. Uh, looks like we're in a bit of a bull market, or at least to start today. Yep, January 8th, it's got the right day on it. And I think what's encouraging for the buyers are these days right here these very, very bullish bars. Now, they're not out of the woods. It looks like there's a whole lot going on here around 6,800. Seller's probably going to try to step up there. We also have kind of this old support zone that was violated. So this is where the sellers picked it up before. It's likely to pick, they're likely to pick it up again. But I'm kind of looking here, I'm thinking 6,800. Um, certainly up here, if it gets back to 7,000, that's going to get a whole lot of uh, sellers interested. But good news for the bulls, I think, at least for the short term. Okay, as we wait for opening range to settle in a little bit, it does appear as we, though we have a bit of a sideways drift going on right now. When you get these sideways trading ranges, I like sideways trading ranges, not to trade, but to wait for the breakout because once that breakout comes, the market's going to tip its hand. We don't know right now whether the market's going to go higher or lower. In fact, a sideways trading range exists because the market is more or less balanced. But there are players here who are getting themselves positioned for the next move. And it could be a very strong breakout, one that doesn't give you a second chance, but that's not as likely. What's 
most likely to happen is we're going to see a breakout. There's going to be a, a reaction of some sort. Once we know that reaction, we can throw our order in in anticipation that the market's going to continue the, that breakout move. So we can do that to the bottom end. We can do that to the top end. The eagle is nice in that respect because it has the broader view. For those of you just trading the Raptor, you can do the same thing with your Raptor. Uh, if you're trading a, an eight tick chart, it might be or not quite as obvious. What you could do is you can run another chart. and perhaps tighten up your bars a little bit so that you can see these kinds of things or you can run a companion chart with a higher tick value that will work as well all right so here now the break oh come on you stinkers where is that reaction? I'd like to see at least, ideally, I'd like to see a two bar reaction. But if I think the market is moving quickly, I will commit to a single bar. Uh, great question here from Paul. Paul's asking, would, do you, sorry, Paul asks, Eric, is it fair to say that the Raptor number three signal is better to keep you out of a chop market? Great question, Paul. Chop markets are the bane of every trader. And the nice thing about a number three signal is it is a continuation signal. What's important to remember with a number three signal, well, actually with any signal, regardless of the tool you're using, is the context of your chart. There's the expression, you have to look left to be right. And all that means is you can't trade in a vacuum. I see so many people's charts that they're they're focusing on the last half dozen bars, and uh, I don't know how they can make any decisions. So I think the important thing to is first to identify: Are you in a chop market or are you in a trending market? The market can only be in one of three phases. It can either be moving up, it can be moving down, or it can be moving sideways. So that's the first key is trying to determine which way is this market moving. I think if you kind of have the broader view, either by shrinking up your chart or by increasing your tick value, you should be able to see that, okay, this is a little bit of a sideways mess. Therefore, I need to be a lot more selective about my signals in general. So. Compare this number three signal that produced right here, and I'm sorry the chart's all scrunchy, with this or with these number three signals where the market was already in a trend. Now, I think the answer is fairly obvious that this number three signal can be taken with greater confidence than this number three signal back here. All right, so here we have a number three signal developing. We've determined that the market's a little bit sideways. So how are we going to handle this trade? It is a number three signal. First off, you could say, well, it is a number three signal, but it's not a really good number three signal. Why? 
because the number three signal is a continuation signal, there's not really much of a trend to continue here because I've already determined the market is more or less in a sideways phase. What you could do in that instance, well, you could do a couple of things. If you're really set on doing the number three signal, you could reduce your risk. So maybe instead of 2%, risk 1%. But I think what I would be more inclined to do is either wait for the a better signal, just say, no, uh, that one's not really one of the high quality signals I'm looking for today. Remember, I, I'm a big proponent of having the quota mindset where we're not in the market trying to capture every single signal. This is what people get wrong when they first take a look at the the Raptor or any of our systems for that matter. They say, oh, well, that signal didn't work out and, you know, okay, well, that signal didn't work out. <laughs> but they look at the chart and they say, oh, here's another signal that didn't work and, oh, your software is no good. Here's a cell signal that didn't work. Well, yes, technically that number one signal did not work out, but Again, it goes back to the whole concept of concept. It goes back to the concept of trying to be a little bit more particular, focusing on your highest probability opportunity. So what that means is if I'm only looking to take two or three or four trades a day, that really helps me to be picky about the trades I'm going to take. Right. So if I'm looking at this number three signal, I'm looking at a market that's in the sideways phase. I may be looking at this and saying, is this going to be one of the best signals I'm going to see today? Probably not. So maybe I'll pass on it and I'll wait for something else. Now, if the market explodes and it just goes you know, higher and higher and higher, you will get another chance to get in. It's very rare for the market not to give you another opportunity to get into a trade. But the other way you could handle this signal is you could do what I refer to as a second push entry. And all a second push entry does is we allow the signal to engage, we see where the market reacts, and then we use that new reactionary level as our A signal bar. So rather than use the signal bar down here, this now becomes the signal bar. And we would only enter if the market continued through that point. Let's go back here though. This number three signal is a little bit easier to take. Why? Because of the context. We have a market that has made a very strong move, really. We've had a market that has broken, looks like a relatively significant swing high. So if we were looking for that, if we deem this to be a little mini trading range, here's the breakout, here's the retest. In fact, you could have taken this signal right here. This is a one of those discretionary signals. It tried to be a number three signal. It tried to get to the hard edge, didn't quite make it, but it still has all the variables of a, a higher probability signal. This is a signal that should have had some follow through. And as you can see, it did. Market comes back again, touches the hard edge. We're looking to continue the trend. Here comes our number three signal and away we go. So if the conditions are right, yes, I think the number three signal is a good way to avoid the chop because by definition, it is a trend signal. So we're looking for the market to be in some sort of trending, trending move before a number three signal prints. I know as a little bit of a drawn out answer, but the context is so important. And you know what? If you miss a move, 
you know, here the market broke. It didn't give me the pullback, the early pullback I was anticipating. I missed this move lower. So what? I missed the move. It won't be the last one. This, uh, by the way, this move is not necessarily over yet. We, we will see a retest of this breakout zone. In fact, we have another kind of little mini trading zone down here. All right here now is our breakout. If this reverses, if this, here's our little pullback, that's occurring. All right, here's our little pullback. If the market does not recover the trend, there is a very good chance we will see a rally from here. And where will the market rally to? Well, it will probably try to rally back here to finally give us that retest of this breakout. It's just what markets tend to do. It's not a guarantee, of course. But we'll see if we can get like maybe a two bar pullback here, then that gives me a more definitive value to short below. Ooh, the trend definitely, definitely bearish right now. Let's see, did we get a, a number three signal? Oh yeah, see, there we go. Speaking of number three signals, here's a number three signal off of this hard edge bounce way back here. Now, once again, taking the context into consideration, is this number three signal worth taking? Sure, but maybe I'll do it on a second push. Maybe I'm not gonna get all that excited about taking it off the first signal because looking at our charts, you know, this is where we're teed up now with our number three signal. If the market does not continue lower, well, then there's a good chance it's going to go higher, isn't it? So I'll be on the lookout now for a number two signal and an opportunity to take the market long. The buyers really have to step up here if they're going to rally the market otherwise otherwise the sellers i think are going to take them to school okay so here now the retest the next buy signal will be a number two signal and in fact i may just pop in with a buy if that occurs There it is. Okay, let's try that again. I can't. I canceled out my other order <laughs> in air. Now it's a little bit risky because it is counter trend, and but my stops are below the lows, so I know. Um, if I get tagged there, I'm definitely on the wrong side of the trade equation. Okay, got the first profit target. Hooray. Uh, one nice thing about having the stops right there, of course, is that uh, it does enable uh, multiple contracts. Oh, don't look back too far. right in the heart of this trading range right now and challenging the hard edge. Um, I would love a move back to 65.65. That would be just a wonderful move here today.
No. Okay, I may have got tagged out a little bit early there, maybe. So it can be on the lookout for perhaps another buying opportunity. The Hawk, um, you know, a little conflicted right now. We've got some yellow bars going on, which a lot of times are a prelude to a reverse. <laughs> So you hawk traders are going to want to be on the lookout here for your first micro macro cross signal. So your bars and lines and filter are all in sync. This now your first micro macro cross. Now you could chase it down here, but here too, I think what I would do, oh, well, we're in yellow bars. I think what I would have done rather than chase the uh, first micro macro cross signal lower, which is perfectly acceptable is just to kind of take it above that little swing high, kind of that second push entry idea. But we're back into yellow bars. And so we're in the holding pattern. The Falcon here, I'm gonna produce a late filter entry slash trend change signal. There's the signal right there. Same idea though, I think I would probably be a little bit more comfortable looking for a breach. Then taking it right on the hash mark. It may be wrong, but. <clears throat> Took a little slip on that. Got slipped a tick. Normally I would just take profit on target here, uh, but 65, 65, I could stretch it a little bit. I could try to take profit here closer to the primary resistance zone, which seems to be having some influence on the market here today. Come on, let's go. Hit the break even, but they're waffling a little bit. Come on, get up there. You can do it. Nuts. <laughs> Not quite ready to go yet. All right, let's put that back on the shelf. Pop. 
part of the hesitation, I think, is because of this little sideways range. Um, but I think the, our premise is still sound, so I will look for another buying opportunity uh, here on the Raptor. We've got ourselves an early number one signal developing, an early cloud crossover. So if you were so inclined, can I risk it? Oh, it's a bit of a stretch, but... All right, let's see if they got the follow through. Let's see if they're going to go. They're thinking about it. What you could do if you were a little bit more anxious on your stops is you could throw a trend line in there and then you could manage your stops according to the trend line. I wouldn't put the stop really tight to the trend line like rather where it's trading here i would probably keep my stop back here somewhere but i've already tagged the break even so i'll just go with that ah so close And I have a feeling that was the result of tagging the top end of the trading range we've been watching. Yep. So depending where you start your trading range, either here or here, we've either had a breakout or we're just kind of challenging the top end. Well, if they muster another rally, I think it's something that I could commit to. Otherwise, uh, they'll just push the market back down and we'll reverse the process. That late filter entry signal working out, I just happen to manage it a little bit too tightly. So late filter entry signal occurring right here. There's the buy. This little hiccup right here tagged me.
Well, back to the whole idea of, of context. We don't have much right now. Wishy-washy. Is that a trading term? Getting that bearish break. They're running a bit. <clears throat> okay, so I was wrong looking for uh, for a bullish reaction. the market with a bit of a bearish move there. Kind of changing the tone. Yeah, I, I would agree uh, with you, Mark. Mark says looks more like a, a second leg lower. It most certainly does. So typically what happens when you breach a significant support zone, and significant is a relative term, uh, <laughs> the rule of thumb is if it looks like it's significant, it's probably significant. If you breach a significant support zone, you can usually expect two moves in the direction of the breakout. So there's move number one, and this is very likely move number two. And we, we had several signals here. Uh, here is a nice little green bar cell, as was back here. I was obviously focusing on getting a, a little bit long. And you know, having, being stopped out a couple of times at break even after trying to buy long, I should have clued in that maybe the market wasn't ready to go long yet. Trend lines are kind of helpful in that respect as well. If you put a trend line across any type of pullback, it usually becomes a little bit more obvious when that pullback fails. That one's actually a little bit shallow. I'd probably end up doing it more like this. But when, when that pullback fails and you come back with a green bar sell, that, that could be something that would be worth trying to to take
Uh, yeah, that's true too, Mark. Mark says uh, many times those are measured moves as well. A measured move, for those of you unfamiliar with the term, the notion is that the market will repeat the previous move on the second leg. So if this is leg number one, oop, wrong button, sorry. If this is leg number one with that breakout right there, um, the next time the market has that same kind of giddy up, you can anticipate that it's going to move the same distance. And this one holding true to form right now hear what's going on with the with the hawk Ooh, a very nice little uh, first micro macro cross lower before the bottom falls out also a four arrow consolidation so you got a couple of signals kind of piggybacking on each other you've got the first micro macro cross you've got a four arrow consolidation um, you know given that to the left here we just experienced a little bit of a rally I in all honesty, I probably would not have gone right after the hash mark. Rather, I would have tried to trade it in this type of fashion where I would be looking for a breakout through this little swing low to bring me in. Uh, regardless, it took no time at all getting to its profit objective. Um, the, while I was looking for the first micro macro cross, where was I looking? Uh, we did have a couple decent first micro macro crosses. This one right here, you did get some heat, but it did end up rallying higher. Uh, this is a good example of why it's not a good idea to stick your stops really tight. Ooh. Looks like it did kiss the profit objective. But the point is, if your stops are too tight, you don't give the trade a chance. Sometimes the market will hesitate a little bit before getting up to your profit objective, especially in a transition type move. If you're either flat out in a sideways market, or in this case, the market tends to maybe look a little bit more bearish it's imperative that you give the trade some room just so that it can have a chance to get to your profit target. Remember too that this is only your safety net. Just because your initial stop is down here does not mean the stop has to stay there. There's nothing to prevent you from moving your stop up to here when the market gets up here or then when it bounces again, bring your stop up to here. If you did get tagged at this point, you can see you've got approximately half of your initial risk. So if this amount right here represented 2% of your capital, um, you got tagged for about 1% of your trading capital. Those are not the kinds of trades that are going to ruin you. Well, as Mark correctly pointed out, we did have a bit of a measured move there uh, that may put a damper on the selling. We've already flipped over on our ATR. So we've already traded through the ATR. It's hard to determine at this point whether this is just a pullback or an actual change in trend. OK, 
here comes the Falcon now with a trend change signal and a late filter entry piggybacking on each other. You know what? I'm going to try it. This is um, a risky trade to be sure because it is counter trend. Maybe I'll give it a couple of ticks before the entry. Um, the better entry would be above the high this little swing high. All right, let's see. <laughs> yeah, Mark's looking back here. He says that was almost a perfect late filter entry signal, but it got spoiled by one bar. Went out of sync right here. This bar next to it probably traded just a tick too high. And it occurred right on the median line. Like I said, I'm being ultra aggressive here, looking for an early buy. And that may come back to haunt me. Come on, just get up there a little bit. Not looking for too much here. Come on, they're kissing the profit target for crying out loud. That was tough. Okay.
Now we're kind of moving sideways again. Well, look at this. We're just kind of in a sideways drift again. I wonder if they're going to try to get a little bit more bullish. Um, sorry, Paul, I missed your uh, earlier comment here. I'm just going back in some of the questions. Uh, Paul asked Eric at... 712, your Raptor printed a number one signal. My Raptor did not. Why is that? That's a darn good question there, Paul, because I guess the market, I'm, I'm guessing now, the market may have been moving so fast here that the clouds crossed briefly, gave me a little bit of a pullback and a number one signal. Technically, though, that is not a real good number one signal. This signal right here is a better number one signal because the clouds were not fully crossed at this point, at least that I can see. Yeah, that's a little bit odd. Oh, yeah, I do see the clouds just crossing here in the back. So I'm assuming things just unfolded here a little bit quickly and fast enough that at least my computer thought it was the number one signal. It did turn out to be a decent move, but in actual fact, this is the true number one signal down here. Uh, sometimes it will happen, too, because um, the way the data comes in, you know, even a few milliseconds difference between my computer and yours could be enough to change the way the data displays. Well, the seller's having a field day here today. Uh, we're back down at the lows right here. And you can see we're printing a few signals. We got a basic trend change signal here on the Falcon. But one thing you should note, when your signal prints away from the trend line, there will be a tendency for the market to try to retrace back to the trend line at some point. Um, Paul's asking, Eric, have you altered your Raptor settings as our signals are not in sync? Paul, are you using the Ninja 8 or the Ninja 7? The reason I, I mentioned that is 
we've actually updated the mean Renko bars and they're standard with the Raptor for Ninja 8. And I can't show you on this one, but what they allow you to do, I'll show you tomorrow, is they allow you to um, tailor the, the, the bar a little bit. So that if you're on Ninja 8, that could be could be one reason. I wouldn't worry so much about the signals not falling totally in sync. Like I said, I'm here on the West Coast. I'm pretty much as far removed from the Chicago Mercantile Exchange as you can be. <laughs> so even a few, like I say, a few milliseconds in data delay uh, could make my computer um, print the signals a little bit differently. Now, what you can do is you can reload your historical data or you can reload your Ninja script. That will reboot everything. I'm not going to do it at this time because it's just going to take too long to do all my charts. It, what this will do, it will force all my charts to reload. Oh, see, Ray says, I got that number one signal back there. And he says, I'm using 40 days of data. You know what it was? It was probably, oh, no, the crossover was right here. I'm I, honestly, I'm not sure. Like I said, that probably just unfolded so quickly. It met the programming requirements. Boom, flash, number one signal. And there you have it. But we're in this sideways funk. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, there you go. Um, David says, or Paul says, I'm using Ninja 7, but Ben installed the new Renko bars. Perhaps that's the issue. And you know what? Paul, you're right. I think I have the new bars on here as well. Here we go. Let's put those on. I forgot that we had those. Now, um, the defaults, I believe, are 8 and 8. And all this does is it allows you to tailor the bar size for the body, which is the trend, and the reversal, which is the wick. Doing this is going to change some of my signals anyhow, because like I said, what I'm doing is rebooting my chart and it's going to go back uh, four days, but we're already kind of an hour and a bit into today's session. Uh, Dan's asking, how do I get the new mean Renko bars? Just go to the members area. And you can download them there. Oh, I don't have enough data loaded. Hold on a second here. Are we loaded yet? No, still loading. Like I said, the the new mean Renkos, um, and these are standard with the Ninja 8 version of the software, they just allow you to 
tweak the bar a little bit. Don't feel like you need to um, change over if you don't want to. My goodness, it's taking a long time to load the data. See, this is why I don't do it a lot of the times. It just takes so long. Well, it's taking a long time to load. Well, <laughs> just waiting. Oh my gosh, this is crazy. Well, I think I just locked up my uh, computer.
Hmm. Well, I think <laughs> I think I may have to reboot my Ninja Trader. Nuts. It won't let me do anything here. Dog got it. Well, folks, um, I'm not sure what to do with this. Other than have to reboot everything. Uh, obviously, it's locked up, so I'm going to have to shut down my ninja and uh, reboot it all so i guess we may as well close up shop here for the morning sorry um we'll do it again tomorrow uh from what i remember <laughs> from before my charts went blank uh the market does seem to be more in a downtrend today so you may want to uh, maybe focus more on selling opportunities off of pullbacks. Sorry about this. Um, yeah, I'll catch you tomorrow. Bye for now.